Houston, let me hear you. Shut up, let's do jokes now, right? Let's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been a good year. I've been able to travel doing comedy all over the world. It's been awesome. Uh, yeah, I just got back from Australia. That was pretty fucking cool, you know? Uh, yeah, it was 11 hour time difference. It was a little bit tough though, you know? Like I landed there at 11 p.m., that's noon here. I was like, there's no way I can sleep tonight unless I go to the bar, I get shit faced, and then I go back to the hotel. I thought it was a pretty good plan, you know? And that's what I do. I go to the bar, I get drunk. Then I walk back to the hotel, and on my way back from the hotel, this Australian guy walks up to me, and he goes, what's your bad number? You know how they sound, fucking stupid. Uh, I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. He goes, you're a fucking cop, mate. And my first thought was, what the fuck do Australian cops look like where you think I'm a cop? You know? And also, why are you trying to fight a cop right now, dude? Like, what the hell is going on? But then when I, when I was there, I learned that cops there, they don't carry guns, and they drive Priuses. And I was like, I'll fight a cop right now, dude. <laughs> yeah, right. But I was like, dude, I'm not a cop, man. Listen to my voice. Listen to my accent. I'm American. <laughs> he goes, you could be an American cop. <laughs> I was like, if I was an American cop, I would have shot you already. Uh, <laughs> That's a fun American joke, huh? Let's go. Oh, yeah. I've had a hell of a year, guys. It's been great. A lot of come-ups. I uh, bought myself a new car this year. Woo. Yeah, yeah. I bought myself a Tesla. Woo. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this, but when you buy yourself a Tesla, people will stop calling you gay. <laughs> it's because they'll just know it at that point. Uh, yeah. My favorite thing about my Tesla is that it drives itself, and that's pretty fun, you know? Like, I'll get on the highway, I'll set it to auto drive, then I'll get on TikTok or jerk off, and uh, <laughs> sometimes people come up behind me, and they're like, hey, you're not driving fast enough. I'm like, I'm not even driving, dude, I'm drunk. <laughs> like, what's going on? Uh, I miss COVID a bit, you guys miss it? No, no that's all right. No, I miss COVID though, I had a great COVID, yeah, I did. I had a great COVID. I lost a few people I didn't care for. <laughs> also, we're from Texas, you know? So that shit was like the hardest two months of our lives. <laughs> like, yeah. I learned a lot though. I took some time to learn about myself. My last name's Youngblood, right? Yeah, that's a Cherokee name. My whole life, my family's like, hey, we're Cherokee, blah, blah, blah. Telling me all about it. I was like, cool, right? I was like, let's learn about the tribe. So I did a 23andMe during COVID. And it came back that I was 40% German, 40% Jewish, and 20% so fucking white, bro. I'm not Native American at all. Yeah. I just spent my entire life in red face like an asshole. To the point where I would go to beaches with friends and they'd be like, hey man, you want some sunscreen? I'm like, nah, dude. I tan easily. I'm Native American. <laughs> also, I find out that I'm German and Jewish. Come on. <laughs> that means I hate myself. And also, I really fucking hate myself, dude. <laughs> I learned I can't listen to NPR as a radio station anymore. Yeah, I learned that. So listen to them during COVID. I don't think you guys should listen to it either. And here's why. They come on the radio and they go, welcome back to NPR. Teeth. Inside bones or outside bones? <laughs> we'll have the answer when we come back. I was like, first off, you just got back. Second off, what the fuck is an outside bone? That doesn't make any sense to me. Like all I could think of in my head is like a skateboarder, he falls, he breaks his leg. I'm like, dude, it's your tibia. That's an outside bone, you know? Where there's like a pervert in the park and he pulls his dick out. And I'm like, outside bone, y'all. Watch out. I got a blind friend. 
It's a weird place to laugh, huh? <laughs> I got a blind friend. He's got a dog. He's got one of those dogs that wears a vest that says, please don't pet me on it. But I do it because he doesn't know. Uh, <laughs> he called me distraught the other day, pissed off. He's like, dude, this piece of shit went blind on me. I got to put it down. I was like, what the hell, man? We kept you. <laughs> what the <laughs> Just got out of a relationship. Yeah. I uh, recently dated a bisexual. Oh, yeah. Worked out for her, because I've got tits. <laughs> Fucking hate that joke. Uh, <laughs> I do miss a lot about that relationship. One of the things I miss most about that relationship, she had a six-year-old son. His name was Jax. He became my best friend. Real stepfather type shit, you know? Like we used to horse play. We used to roughhouse. We used to talk shit. It was real fun. We used to do this one game where I'd put him in a headlock, and I'd slap him in the face, and I'd be like, welcome to Slap City, bitch. <laughs> And his mom would always be like, hey, dude, could you not swear at my son? I was like, well, you know, we're breaking up. What's the matter? <laughs> but she would always try to get involved in the shit talking in the horse play, but she was never very good at it, you know? Like one day we're driving down the road and he's in the back seat being silly. And I tell him, hey, Jax, if you keep acting like that, I'm gonna take you to Slap City. And his mom tried to get involved. And he goes, yeah, Jax, if you keep acting like that, Andrew, it's gonna take you to Pound Town. I go, what the fuck did you just say? She goes, Pound Town, it's the same thing as Slap City. I go, nope. That was a very different destination. You can't say that. What if he goes to school? What if he goes to school and he's like, yeah, my mom's boyfriend, Andrew, he takes me to Pound Town every week. I'm not going to jail because you're retarded. That's not okay. I try to teach him pranks, like the classic ones, you know? Like the, hey, you got something on your shirt and then you look down and I flick you in the face. Like, you guys all know that one, right? If you had a father. And uh, I taught him that one and he goes, hey, should I go do that to mom? I was like, dude, you should definitely go do that to mom. So he walked over to his mom. He's like, hey mom, you got something on your shirt? And then she looked down, and he punched her in the fucking nose. <laughs> and she's hurt. And he runs over to me. He's like, did I do a good job? I was like, dude, you definitely took her to Pound Town. So good on you, bro. Like, mm. Been gaining a lot of weight. That's not fun, huh? You guys get it. Houston's fat. Uh, <laughs> Well, I call it like I see it, buddy. <laughs> I get it, yeah. I gained a lot of weight. I gained a lot. I gained so much weight that I Uber eats here tonight. Uh, it's tough. I've never dated this weight class before. That's new to me, man. No one wants to be with a big guy. No one wants to date a fat guy. You know, fat women. Well, you've got black guys, so that's pretty cool <laughs> for y'all. I get it. Some of you are like, hey, I don't know if I can laugh at that. I'm from Tomball. I don't have black friends. Uh, but it's okay. I actually asked my black friend. I go, it's okay if I tell that joke. He goes, yeah, man, that's funny. But his girlfriend sat on me. So <laughs> um, Black people are actually my favorite race, hands down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cops' favorite race, hands up. But mine, hands down. <laughs> For sure, yeah. yeah. So much so, February is my favorite month, Black History Month, or as the police call it, cuffing season. <laughs> Listen, guys, I didn't write that joke. America did. You leave me out of it. I, uh, I actually don't think there's any argument at this point. I think black people are the best race. It's fact. Whitey, we're out. It's just what it is. Yeah, yeah. I'll break it down for you real quick if you don't believe me. Let's just break it down. First off. They're the best athletes. Can we agree with that? Yeah. Before black people played in the NBA, scores were like 30 to 32, and nobody watched that shit at all. They're the best musicians. Also a fact. Even their shitty ones are the best musicians. Right? It's true. Like, we could all agree, R. Kelly is a bad person, right? But if 
Remix to Ignition came on the radio right now, we'd all be like, toot, toot. Let me hear that. It's so good, dude. It's a fucking great song. They put up numbers. It's awesome. They put up an extra inch or two in Dick Alone, guys. It's very impressive. They put up numbers. Guys, before 2008, the most drone strikes by any president was 56. Obama came in and put up over 500. Dude. That is a natural athlete right there. Also, I think it's pretty cool. I've never seen a black person on To Catch a Predator. I think that's pretty good for a race, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah, turns out pedophilia, mostly a white sport. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like basketball in the 1940s, dude. <laughs> a bunch of white guys fucking around. We all see it, we're like, this is bad, dude. <laughs> but how good was that show? How good was To Catch a Predator? Oh, God, it was the best show that ever existed. If you don't know what it was, this is the show, right? There's this guy, this legend, this king named Chris Hansen. And what he'd do is he would get on the internet, he would lure a child predator to our house where he thought he was gonna get laid, and he would be waiting there with a live camera crew and the police, and on live TV, we'd get to watch someone's life crumble and be like, yeah! It was so good, dude! It was the best show that ever existed. The lies that these dudes would say were so good to get out of it. Like, Chris would walk in and be like, hey man, what were you gonna do with this 12-year-old girl? Exactly. What were you gonna do with this 12-year-old girl? And the guy would be like, Chris. He knew Chris by name somehow. <laughs> He's seen the show. <laughs> He's like, Chris, me? I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, funny uh, story. I, I was gonna wait till their parents got home. <laughs> and then we were gonna talk about what they're doing on the internet. And then Chris was like, but uh, you sent a cockpit, so I don't think that's gonna hold up in court, you know? It might confuse a judge a little bit where the judge is like, hey, I think we should take a recess. And I'm like, maybe not let these guys near a recess at all. I love that show. There's a guy who got caught twice on To Catch a Predator. He walked in and Chris goes, you again? Like, that's crazy. There's a reoccurring character on To Catch a Predator, y'all. There's a Kramer of pedophilia out there that's just kicking open kids' doors like, hey, buddy, it's bad. I love that show, but it got taken off the air. Yeah, and it got taken off the air because they arrested a mentally disabled person. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't say he was mentally disabled. They just blurred his face out. But you could tell, because that forehead blur was fucking huge. <laughs> Guys, that's not the worst part about it. They still pepper sprayed him and tackled him on the way out like everybody else. It just took like eight of them, because he had that fucking strength, you know? <laughs> I see where some of you guys lie now, and I kind of like it. It's all right. My favorite episode of To Catch a Predator. Yeah, we're still talking about this show. My favorite episode of To Catch a Predator, there is an episode, right, where there's a rabbi that goes to meet a 12-year-old boy. Yeah. Chris walks in and he goes, are you sure you're not Catholic? Yeah. <laughs> This is fun, you guys are nice, I like this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think if we're gonna talk about uh, pedophilia, I should probably bring up politics for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and I know you guys are looking at me, a lot of you guys are like, hey, look at this cuck liberal, and you're right, you can sleep with my wife. Uh, I'm kidding, she left me. Uh, no, listen, I, I am a liberal, but I'm a Texas liberal, right? which means I'm a pretty bad liberal, right? Like, I like to shoot guns, I still say the word retarded, and, uh, 
And I don't like Joe Biden. Not a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not like, let's go Brandon or anything like that. <laughs> but I am like, let's get a guy who can ride a bicycle, maybe, for president, you know? <laughs> maybe a guy who can open his own soup can for leader of the free world would be <laughs> nice, I think. Uh, but also, I'm from Texas, and we're run by fucking psychopaths, too, right? Yeah, don't woo for them. That's crazy. <laughs> That's right. It's funny, because I travel all over the world. I tell these jokes. I told this joke in Australia, and they knew all of our bad guys in Texas. Do you know how crazy that is? I don't know one motherfucker from a different state, and they knew our guys. That's crazy. You guys know all of our bad guys, right? We got future vampire Ted Cruz, you know? Yeah. AKA the Mexican runaway. Uh, and then my least favorite is Greg Hot Wheels Abbott. And, uh, yeah. and listen, obviously he's the governor. He's done a ton of bad things. And uh, he's also in a wheelchair, which does not. That's not why we're laughing here, sir. It does not make him worse of a person. But it does add to that evil aesthetic, like a little bit, doesn't it? I don't know, it's a little bit, you know? Like he should be sitting in his chair and he's petting a cat and he's like, turn off the power grid. Like it's uh... And I would never pick on him for being in a wheelchair. That's not me, that's ableist shit. But I will pick on him for the way he ended up in that wheelchair. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people think he's a war hero. That is not the case. In 1984, Greg Abbott was jogging down the street and a tree fell on him. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I've jogged a couple times. Uh, and I've never seen a tree fall before. And there's not anyone in this room that should feel bad about that happening to him because he's done so many shitty things for our environment that eventually a tree was like, yo, hold my drink, I got this. It's a new joke, but I think it's got legs. Uh, yeah, fuck that guy. They took abortion away from us, what the fuck? That sucks, huh? Anyone else miss blasting in women or is it just me? Uh, fucking loved it, dude. You guys remember that shit? That was awesome. I loved it. It was so exciting. You could time it right, and you're like, oh, that's the most exciting part if you got it right. Sometimes you'd be like, oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, fuck, I got another kid. Uh, <laughs> oh, it sucks. And listen, ladies, I think you should be able to do anything you want with your bodies. It's yours. Do what you want. Oh, yeah. I'm not trying to be a white knight here, but my personal belief on abortion is I feel like a fetus should be able to be aborted all the way up to the age of 18 years old. Uh, all right. Maybe I'll lighten it up a little bit for some of you. How do you guys feel about uh, trans sports? Yeah. <laughs> Silence and then yes. Yes, that's how I feel. Yes. I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? I don't know. Yes. I get it. It's tough. We can all agree that that is a tough topic to talk about right now, right? Listen, I have trans friends, and I love them. I want them to have the best life possible. I want them to have the best journey possible, right? Yeah, of course. Stand up for people that need it. I want them to have the best journey possible. But I did watch that one UFC fight where that girl got her skull cracked open by that trans woman. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> Maybe this isn't one. I don't know. I don't know, right? But here's the deal. I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to be part of the solution. I think I figured this out, so we don't have to be weird about it anymore. This is what we do, right? Get rid of all gendered sports altogether. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, I'm with you, sister. Uh, or <laughs> mister, whatever you want to be. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. I think we get rid of all gendered sports altogether. Man, woman, trans, you can try out for any team you want. And if you make it, great, good for you. That solves a lot of problems, because then we will never have to watch women play sports again. And I think that's important for all of us. Yeah. A lot of you guys got scared when I said trans. I can see it on your face. You're like, this guy's about to say something transphobic. <laughs> Turns out, just a sexist up here, guys. <laughs> uh, 
What do you guys want to talk about next? You want to talk about uh, sex? Or do you guys want to talk about my kids? Which one? Your kids. All right, all right. So the other day I was having sex with my kids. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I did. Thanks. Let's talk about sex. I have kids. It's depressing. Uh, let's talk about sex. My friend told me I should find a squirter. <laughs> Always a guy wooing there. Never. Any squirters in here? Make some noise. What the fuck just happened there? Oh, yeah. All right. Well, now you're going to be followed to your car by 30 dudes, so... You did it to yourself. I'm kidding. Someone walk into a car. Keep her safe. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. It is weird, guys. We all find it so hot for some fucking weird reason. We know it's pee, but we're like, oh, give it to me. It's fucking fucked up. It's weird. Listen, I get it. It seems kind of hot, right? It seems kind of hot until you got to sleep in it, right? Then I'm like, I don't know. Not really for me. Like, listen, I love a slip and slide. <laughs> But I've never done a slip and slide and thought, I should nap here now. Like that's <laughs> a friend asked me for dating advice. He's like, Andrew, I'm seeing this girl and I really like her. But the last time we hung out, she was giving me a blow job. And then right before I came, she grabbed my penis and pointed it at my face. <laughs> and made me come in my own face. He goes, I felt betrayed. <laughs> I swear to God, if that shit happened to me, <laughs> it'd be like. Marry me. That is the funniest thing that anyone could ever do to you. Oh my God, that is so funny. Dude. That's the funniest person in the room. Man or woman, you fucking put a ring on that person right now. I also like to share that story because I like to think I'm putting ideas into people's heads tonight. <laughs> like, sir, if you get offered a blowjob later, you're probably like, meh, I think I'll probably sit this one. <laughs> Maybe throw on one of those old school COVID shields right before you do it. <laughs> but also, I don't know you. Maybe you just go and grab it out of the sky. Listen, I don't kink shame. I don't do that. Houston, do we kink shame here? That was about one third of the audience. The rest of you are like, for sure. Is this a kinky audience? Uh, anyone feeling brave? Yeah. You seem pretty brave. What's your kink? Oh, not that brave. All right, I got it. <laughs> anyone want to share their kink? I don't want, oh, here we go. Oh, of course you do, holy shit. CNC. Yeah, what was CNC? That's great, because none of Consensual, oh, fucking, uh, yes, rape. That's what that one is. That's what I, that's what I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it, no, that's funny. Also, I'm selling yes, rape shirts after this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's wild. Wow, that's a, that's a dangerous one, dude, isn't it? So what happens if you're like just in a fight and you're like, no, I don't want this. And you're like, she's like, oh, come on. It's kind of your thing. And you're like, no, 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 no. I gotta, I'm, I'm serious now. Stop it. And then, you know, then it gets weird. So <laughs> we get any other good ones in here? Hell yeah, dude. I know you. Let's do it. You gonna, hold he just, went like, he just went like this to whisper to me across an audience. That is amazing. Uh, hold on. So great. What was it? <laughs> Dude, hold on. You don't have to do this. It's a volunteer thing. Or is this it? This is the kink right here. Yeah. Uh, pussy pump? Whoa. Hold on. Let's all learn something. What's going on? What do you mean? You can't never mind it. What is a pussy pump? Is that, I'm assuming it's just like a penis pump, but it just makes the uh, yeah, yeah, fat yeah, pussy. It makes it fat, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> you know what's easier? Fat girls. That's so much easier. Just skip right to it. You don't have to fuck with it. Just go straight to the fat girl. No pump involved. So, I think I saved you $50, sir. Uh, <laughs> 
You shouldn't kink shame, y'all. You shouldn't. And here's why. Maybe, first of all, every motherfucker in here has a Pornhub search on their phone that as soon as they're done with it, they're like, I gotta fucking throw this phone away. But I guess... Yeah. You shouldn't because if you like somebody, if you care about something, they bring something to you and you go, ew, gross, you're a fucking bad person. <laughs> At least give it a shot. Maybe you'll learn something, dude. Maybe you'll like it. I dated a girl once. And she goes, Andrew, I want to try something, but I don't want you to kink shame me. And I go, I would never... What do you got? She goes, Andrew, will you pee on me? Wow. Oh, wow. I was like, <laughs> I'll try anything twice, you know? <laughs> and it wasn't that weird. I'm here to tell you guys right now, not that weird. Aside, aside from putting down the tarp, it wasn't that weird. <laughs> but in the middle of it, she goes like this. Shit. She wants me to pee in her mouth. I was like, I'll try anything once. You know? But then it felt like I was playing that carnival game with the squirt gun. Before I knew it, the guy next to me had won a prize. Uh, kink shamers, every one of you. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, I got two kids. Yeah, which is my favorite transition. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I got two kids. I, uh, I got a six-year-old Mexican. Woo! Woo! Hell yeah, dude. You got a six-year-old Mexican, too? You look like a six-year-old Mexican. Who gave you, who gave you that Modelo shirt? <laughs> Is your dad a liquor rep? Who let this kid in? <laughs> Listen, I got a six-year-old Mexican. Yeah, he was a diversity hire. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes people ask me, like, Andrew, how did you get a Mexican child? I'm like, I'm white, I can buy whatever I want. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I'm from Texas, I did not buy my Mexican child. I found it at a flea market. If you bring an extra pair of chonclas, it'll run right up to you. They're tired of being barefoot. Yeah. Fuck you guys, I'm the inclusive one here, it's my kid. Sometimes people see a picture of my kid on my phone. They see it's a different race than me. And they're like, Andrew, is that your kid? I'm like, no, that's just a picture of a kid I think's hot. Why would I have a picture of any other kid? What is wrong with people? It's fucking insane. I have a Hispanic child because I date mostly Hispanic women. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah. So I am a survivor of domestic abuse. You should have held on to those woos. Uh, sometimes when I see someone clap after that joke or I hear it, I can't tell if they're just being supportive or slapping up their boyfriend. Uh, I dated a girl once when it was good, it was good. And when it was bad, it was moy, moy bad. We lived with each other for about two years. She moved out of my house, right? We run into each other a couple months later at a bar. We start doing shots together. I can tell the night's not going in a good direction. And I leave. Right? I go to another Houston establishment called Boondocks. Don't, don't cheer, you're bad people. Uh, that's just what, I just say that so I know who not to hang out with after the show. No, no, no. I go to Boondocks where I meet a girl for the very first time. We hit it off right away. Within 30 minutes, we're going home together because it was Boondocks. Uh, <laughs> We go home together, we have a great night, right? We're having a good time. We're laying there naked at 4 a.m. My ex proceeded to get so drunk that night that she forgot we didn't live together. And she still had a key to my place because I didn't change the locks because I was poor. That's how that shit works, right? So she comes in and all hell breaks loose. My Nintendo Switch gets smashed, the cops get called, and then she goes to jail. And then it's just me and this poor girl that I met for the very first time wow. that night, sitting on the edge of the bed. She looks at me and she's like, Andrew, this is a huge red flag. <laughs> and I was like, no shit, lady. <laughs> and I go, hey, I'm so sorry. And I completely understand if you never want to talk to me again, I am so sorry. And she's like, no, Andrew, I like you. And I totally want to see you again. And I was like, this, is a huge red flag.
I got to travel with my Mexican recently. <laughs> yeah, they're portable. Uh, we're headed to Disney World. Very exciting trip for us, right? 45 minute TSA line. And that's like for a six year old, that's the worst thing in the entire world, you know? Yeah. So he looks at me, he's like, Dad, why do we gotta wait in this line? So I told him, I gave him a very family friendly 9 11 story. <laughs> I told him, well, you see, son, about 20 years ago, our president decided to kill about 3,000 of our own people <laughs> for oil. And they just want to make sure that we don't have any knives or guns or bombs or anything that could hurt anybody on the plane. And he goes, okay, Dad. And he was good the rest of the time. It was perfect, right? 45 minutes of silence. It was a 9-11 miracle. <laughs> and we get to the conveyor belt. And as I'm putting my bag on the conveyor belt in front, of my, in front of the agent, my son looks at me and he goes, so, Dad, how does that bomb work? I go, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> And the agent goes, what bomb? I go, there's no fucking bomb. I don't have a bomb. He doesn't have a bomb. He's Mexican. He might have coke in his ass, but no <laughs> bomb. I was like, do we get naked here? Or do we have to go to a different room? How does that shit work? <laughs> so we go to the fucking different room. They search us. They interview us. We go through the whole rigmarole and then finally let us go. And on the way out, the agent's like, hey, man, where are you guys going anyways? I was like, well, we were going to go to Disney World, but now we got to stop by Pound Town on the way out. <laughs> I, uh, so yeah, I got the six-year-old Mexican, and then I got a, uh, I got a 13-year-old white. <sighs> it sounds different when you pop the T, doesn't it? <laughs> it's tough. Anyone here with white kids, make some noise. Did you hear how sad that was? That was so fucking sad. That was one guy in the back go, Ooh. There's definitely some white kids in the mix here. I can fucking see it. No, it's, I don't blame you, dude. I, like, listen. It's not, you shouldn't be proud of white kids. It's tough. <laughs> they come out entitled. It's very different. When you have a white kid, the doctor hands you your white kid in an iPad and they're like, good luck, you're gonna need this shit. Like, it <laughs> sucks. They come at you very differently. I remember seven years old, my son walked up to me and goes, Dad, why aren't you married anymore? I was like, shut up, dude, that's hard. <laughs> he goes, when I get older, I'm gonna marry mom. <laughs> I was like, you better get a good fucking lawyer, buddy. Because <laughs> you're just like me, and she fucking hates me, dude. <laughs> it's crazy. A lot of people think when you have a kid that all your fatherly instincts kick in right away, and that's not the case. Sometimes it takes five to ten years. And uh, I remember the exact moment it happened to me, right? We're in the middle of a Nerf war. He shoots me in the neck. He runs up to me. He goes, Dad, can you check? If I poop my pants? And I was like, you don't know? <laughs> He's like, no. I was like, why don't you know, man? He goes, Dad, I was having so much fun with you that I didn't want to stop to take a break to go to the bathroom. I was like, oh my God, that's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. But then I checked his pants and he totally shit his pants. <laughs> Not only that, but it looked like someone frosted his ass like a cake. <laughs> Some of y'all don't like cake, all right. But that point in my life, I was like, I don't know how to like, how do you handle that, right? But that fatherly instinct finally kicked in. I figured it out, right? I stripped him naked, I pulled him in the bathroom. He's like, are you gonna get it? I'm like, no, you. <laughs> He's like, use your hand. I was like, use your hand. <laughs> right, I was like, what do I do, right? I waited for that fatherly instinct to kick in one last time, right? To kick in again, and I, turn on the shower, tossed him in, right? Except for I forgot that my shower takes like five minutes to warm up. <laughs> he's just shaking in the cold water with the shit on his ass and he's like, are you gonna get it? I'm like, no. He's <laughs> like, what do I do, right? I figured it out, took the head of the shower, I turned it on massage. And then I was like, Edwin, bend over. <laughs> And then I sprayed out the butthole of a boy that I love. <laughs> Who's ever said that sentence and not been in jail? <laughs> and the entire time I'm doing it, this is what he does. <laughs> He's losing his fucking mind. 
I don't know if it's because it feels amazing. It probably does. We've all been in hot tubs. <laughs> or if he's just realized I've become his bitch at this point. I don't... No. Ten years old. I was trying to get him to go to the grocery store. That's tough for a kid. One of the least favorite places for a kid in the whole world. But luckily I lie. And so I was like, hey, we're not going to the grocery store. We just got in the car. That's, it's that easy. That's how easy parenting is. Everyone's like, oh, it's really hard. Well, try lying. It's not that hard. <laughs> but we get in the car. You know, 10 years old, we drive up to Kroger. He sees it's a grocery store. And he's like, you know, he's like, oh, shit! Except for he's 10, so he didn't say that. You know, he was like, oh, fuck! <laughs> he goes, I'm not going in there. I'm like, I was like, you're going in there. We need frozen pizzas or you're not eating all weekend. <laughs> and I don't know where he got this from. It was probably NPR. <laughs> but he looked at me and goes, no! My body, my choice! <laughs> I was like, stop making daddy look like a Republican and get in the fucking store. <laughs> but now he's 13. It's a whole different game, dude. I can't do it anymore. I'm over it. He came up to me the other day and he goes, Dad, what's that mole on your arm? I go, I don't know, man. It just kind of seems like a mole to me. He goes, I don't know, man. Looks like ligma. <laughs> and then I go, what's ligma? <laughs> And he goes, a lick my balls! <laughs> and then I shot him dead right then. Because Texas is an open carry state. You don't talk to your fucking parents like that. That is crazy, dude. Let's not skip over the fact that I'm a comedian. How did I not see that shit coming, right? <laughs> Do you know what would have happened if I told my father, a lick my balls? <laughs> He would have beat the shit out of me right then. He's actually old school. He would have been like, Andrew, go outside and grab a switch. Actually, go outside, grab a tree. I'm going to Greg Abbott your ass right now. <laughs> you guys have been a wonderful crowd. Oh. I know it's late, but I love all of you for showing up. Before I go, I'd like to share one last story of triumph and love. And I think it will all be really nice for us to get off on a high note after I talked about so many stupid things. Uh, I had my first threesome recently. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you guys, the rest of you. Where I'm from, we clap for our heroes, but whatever. I was hanging out with my friend Roland and his ex-girlfriend Mary. Yeah, it's one of those. But you can't have your claps back, sir. Uh, we're hanging out at a place called Lola's Depot in Houston, Texas. Yep, another place. If you know it, you're a bad person. Uh, it's one of those places where there's bras stapled to the ceiling, and they call it decor. <laughs> like, it's bad. It's about 2 in the morning. My friend Roland goes, hey, man, you want to party more? Let's go to your house. You live nearby. I go, cool, sounds good. Right? We hop in an Uber, we head to my house. I need to point out right now that my friend Roland had not told me his plan for the night at all. <laughs> so we get to my house, we do a couple shots, I sit on the couch, and then Roland sits next to me. And then Mary is standing right in front of us. And then Roland looks at me, then he looks at Mary, and he goes, Mary, Andrew and I would like to have sex with you. I was like, I didn't fucking say that, dude. You gotta check with me first. And then I looked at her like. <laughs> and her response was, y'all will tell. <laughs> and she's right, because I'm doing it on my special right now. <laughs> so I find myself inside of the same woman as Roland Weathers on Facebook. <laughs> And I'll never forget as long as I live. Because she said something very sweet to me. She goes, Andrew, normally big guys like you have small penises. But you have a very average penis. <laughs> and then I came. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the problem. Roland Weathers on Facebook hadn't come yet. And I was like, oh shit, what do I do now? What do you do? What do you do in that situation, right? Do you sit on the edge of the bed and stare at the wall? 
No. That's my best friend, dude. Like, get behind him, rub his shoulders. Like, you got this, buddy. Finish strong, you know? Or do you just sit and stare? Because that's what I chose. <laughs> and at one point, me and Roland Weathers, W-E-A-T-H-E-R-S, we locked eyes. <laughs> He's like, I'm done, I can't do this anymore. And I was like, I've been done, so whatever, dude. <laughs> just collapse, his passion, you don't think about it, you just collapse where you are, you know? So I find myself with Mary on the left, yours truly in the middle, and then at Roland Weathers on Twitter. <laughs> Sometimes he gets messages after my shows. He's like, hey man, did you uh, tell that joke again? I'm like, yeah, dude. I wouldn't respond. They want something from you. <laughs> Guys, and this is when the story gets weird. <laughs> Roland pops his head up looks over my beautiful barrel chest at Mary and says, Mary, I love you. <laughs> and then Mary pops her head up, looks back over my beautiful barrel chest at Roland and says, Roland, I love you too. <laughs> and then I go, what the fuck is happening right now? And then I leave, but then I remember it was my apartment. So I come back, I'm like, get the fuck out. And that night, Roland and Mary got back together. Yeah. Guys, love is real. Yeah. Nice. And now, they're married. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, I was not invited to the wedding. That's my time. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much, Houston. I love you.